Hi everybody, it's me, Ryan, and welcome to Confidence Through Cabaret. Uh, today, it's Wednesday, and we wanted to talk to you a little bit about someone very special to Confidence Through Cabaret. Um, so I have the great privilege today of doing a little mini interview with the co-pioneer of Confidence Through Cabaret, the founder of the Incredible Attitudes Training, the globally successful, the amazing, the brilliant, and beguiling, and also the person with uh, some of the keenest insight I've ever met, um, the wonderful Heather Jean. Hey, Heather. Hi. How Hi. are you doing today? Oh, wow. Oh. Happy old day. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, of course, of course. Had to give you the good intro. Had to give you the good intro, of course. <laughs> I feel a bit bad about yours. <laughs> oh, fish. Pish, pish, pish. <laughs> pish. That's what we say now. Pish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a new thing. <laughs> so today we wanted to talk to you about um, about a number of different things. We want to sort of like discuss with our community and and get people to understand all the wonderful things that have kind of made you you. And, and we were talking in uh, last week's interview about you know work life, personal life, and stage life as our sort of three pathways. Um, in which we can sort of transfer and improve our confidence. And you're someone who has an amazing set of skills. You've got incredible, um, uh, as I said in, in your introduction, you have an incredible level of insight and, and information into building confidence, not only on a personal level, but in a corporate world as well, um, which fed into your incredible business hate, um, attitudes, which I wanted to talk to you about. So. We wanted to ask, I, I wanted to ask you today, what inspired you to get involved in this, in this way? To get involved in, in... Oh, sorry, in, yes, in, in attitudes in the first place, in, in consultancy and in, in, in this work. So I had been a, 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 an internal trainer for businesses for mm -hmm. lots of years already. Um, and I was quite lucky because uh, I was around in the era of just in time and um, you know people looking at process improvements and so on and so I quickly learned that I didn't love processes right. I love people in processes mm -hmm. um, and then and then I went on to to other work and uh, was all about you know management and, and customer service and people connecting with people mm. um, and I had the opportunity while I lived in the Middle East to be able to um, work cross-culturally and multiculturally. So I would bring people to head office and they would, you know, come in. And, and so we, we would have many different nationalities in the room mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the opportunity to kind of connect with that. Long kind of before it was, you know, um, we worked virtually we, because in those days we didn't. Um, and long before we um, really kind of got to an understanding of, of different cultures. And then I traveled a lot to various cultures and learned about, you know, how they could implement the, the same kind of transferable skills. Mm -hmm. So when I came back to the UK after being an expat, I um, kind of fell into attitudes. Like, it, you know, it, it's one of those things a little bit like, being in training nobody ever actually does it on purpose like it just happens to you and uh, anytime you talk about, to somebody in training they'll they, you know co coaches would say you know I, I i had this passion and i wanted to do it and i trained to do it but training usually doesn't work like that it just tends to work like oh can you show somebody else how to do this and then before you know it you're showing lots of people how to do lots of things yeah. um and so and so i kind of fell into it um i had two very big uh, corporate clients, yeah. very big, huge. Um, one of them has little uh, mouse ears on it, um, and uh, but we won't name them. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, and and the other was in was in a a, a, a brand new uh, telecoms brand that that um, in those days again, you know, mobile phones weren't weren't our friends or mm. our, they were well they were our friends but they weren't our 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 necessary kind of. Right. A third hand um, so so um, I kind of cut my teeth a lot uh, as I was going mm. and I had to do an awful lot of pretending yes of course I know what I'm talking about and then go and do loads of research mm. uh, and there wasn't loads of research to do because there wasn't a lot of stuff on the internet 
So I had to learn from lots of other people. Mm. I had to pull in all the resources I could find of, you know, what do you know about this? How can I find it? I read books, I watched videos and yes, they were real videos, not just the word video. Um, and, and, and I had to learn very quickly to be able to translate that into what a client wanted. So it was, so I had my training background already. You know, I, I knew how to, how to prepare training. I knew how to deliver training, but I didn't necessarily know all of the subjects. So I had to get really good at those things really quickly right. um and i think you know like a lot of us if you go to university you study and you learn about something but you don't necessarily uh, appreciate the application and that's what i was being paid to do was translate okay. my psychology background into like what does a business do with this information sure so sure. It, it was a lot of uh uh crazy times of just winging it and just kind of going okay and lots of studying yeah right. lots and lots of studying yeah well that's um, a really interesting thing and this is this is again where we have another uh, transfer and crossover with cabaret is um the idea of, of improvisation so yeah. there's a point there where you you've gathered all that knowledge you know the material or you or you've you've had to kind of set yourself up to understand what the material is that you're going to teach but there's an improvisational element there um, and a lot of people, I think, find that they they struggle with improvisation. They struggle with finding that 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 moment of of being able to go, yes, I can do that, and I can figure that out as I go along. So, how did you kind of how have you established that within yourself, and how do you how do you nurture that quality? Okay, so I was lucky to not have that that sense of imposter syndrome in right. those days. Or it, well, if I did have it, I didn't know, so that was kind of handy. Um, but I, so, and a lot of people used to talk to me about imposter syndrome, and and, mm. and I understood it because I'd studied it, but but I but I didn't really uh, um, have that relationship to it of you know what if I fail because mm. I didn't I didn't feel like I had anything to lose, you know it was like okay I'll try that, um, and so I was very much an I'll try anything once, and I still am. But I'm um, a little more cautious um, having had children. You know, it's like, okay, I'll try anything once as long as it doesn't do anything long lasting and damaging. So, yes. um, <laughs> the other thing is, in my nature, I'm fortunate to have um, just an inbuilt optimism. Mm -hmm. um, and it comes with my extroverted feeling uh, uh, preference. Um, and and it and it is just all about yeah we can do that and if somebody says no we can't they'll say okay but what you can do is or i know you can't but if you could what would you do i mm -hmm. i i've always had that as a nature mm -hmm. um and what i actually had to learn was the opposite of what somebody who like so if somebody isn't optimistic by nature mm -hmm. right um you can still create that mindset for sure but what i had to learn was that any overextended strength becomes your weakness Right. So although I was very optimistic, that also can become your weakness because you be, yeah, it'll be fine. And sometimes you're not prepared for the adversity because right. you just don't, because you just know it's going to be fine somewhere. Yeah. And it is, and, and it, and it usually is. Um, but I had to learn kind of the opposite of, of how to, to bring that ridiculous, uh, unquestioning optimism back into some sort of a realistic thing of, okay, but let's plan for some of these things. Sure. What was that process like? Um, I know you don't I, well, like processes, I, I, but I've got to ask. <laughs> I, also, I, because a lot of my work is, uh, is around um, personality profiling and, and, mm -hmm. and, and not, not in a labeling sense, but in a, mm -hmm. how do we understand our preferences? And then how do we use that to understand others and, mm -hmm. and adapt and connect to build relationships? And, and, uh, I, it was, uh, I kept getting these reports back from, from the various tools that I use sure. saying, you know, how optimistic I am and how that, that can be, uh, my development area. And I didn't like it. I didn't okay. like it at all. I was like, That's ridiculous. That's how absolutely dare you? Ridiculous. How can you say that unquestioning optimism could be my weakness? Right. And then, and then when that happens and you learn that, oh yeah, I, I, I probably needed to learn that. I, so I learned a lot of lessons and I, and I did go unwillingly for a long time right. to, to learning that. 
but you do you do you know it there's a there's a lot of lessons that just keep coming up right. and the reason that they keep coming up is because you didn't learn the lesson yeah. you know you you actually understood it but you didn't internalize it and yeah. that's why the lesson keeps coming back it yeah. keeps coming back yeah Absolutely. and and i think that's true for all of us you know there's yeah. you, if you you get even if it's just like feedback at work where you're getting you know fee feedback about maybe how how you Put, put information across mm. and maybe it seems uh, not so positive for example then if you have that as as um as kind of like a pattern mm. then you'll quickly learn that that's a lesson that you need to take in and, and reflect on and, and and make some changes with sure. um, so i work with very much around patterns of behavior in my work um and and so i had to look at my own patterns of behavior sure. as well sure yeah okay. yeah sure. And so, um, I because I, I find this really uh, I find this really fascinating. It's, and again, it's another one of the the things that we have very much in common with um, with regards to how we deliver um, a lot of our content and a lot of our, our our information is often can be on quite large scales. Um, so you have quite a lot of experience in in talking through the the concepts and and working with people on very large scales in you know in business environments which is it, it in so in so many ways feels very familiar but very alien to me um because it's such a different skill set but it also is transferable and it's that yeah. knowing that is quite interesting <clears throat> for, for people who have um who would necessarily find who wouldn't necessarily be able or consider themselves able to take to a stage of a large nature uh, you know to deliver corporate content or to deliver uh, development content um how did you go about that how did you start on that path and like how did that how did that become something that was very sort of like okay yeah i can do that yeah so, and, and actually, you know, because a lot of us are talking online, which is mm. like an infinite amount of audience, yeah. isn't it? And, yes. you know, you, you know, and, and they would always say with, with something online that you, you need to be talking to someone mm. as if you're, as if you're having just a, a conversation and then that, mm. that you know, radiates and, and resonates with, with different people. Um, so for me, but because I, I, my conferences tend to be, or how used to, used to be, um large conferences face to face yeah um i i live by this kind of truism which is how can you know what you've communicated until you know what i've understood right that's interesting so it's not just about and this is where you know I, i've been on lots of training courses and mm. present seen lots of presenters and i and i you know if i've been to lots of conferences where there have been keynote speakers and you know motivational speakers um, that are doing a lot like what I'm doing but they're not connecting right because they're thinking about what they're communicating mm -hmm. so for example on a smaller scale you might have somebody who's presenting their slides right and they're just sharing that information and you and you could think well why don't you just email me that presentation I could read it myself because, sure, sure. because what, what you're not thinking about is how I'm connecting with that information right. and what I'm understanding from that information Right, right. And so, and so, so when you're when you're talking to a, a large audience, you need to be thinking about what are they understanding, what do they need to know, what 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 are some of the the basic terms that you need to know, um, if 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 at all. Like, I, so I I'm I'm very much a beginner's mind person, like very much. I, I love a beginner's mind, and so I would always start from the okay. So humor me here. Let's say right. we're doing something on leadership. Talk to me about what your definition is of leadership, because what when I ask a question. I never assume that I know what you're gonna say. Right. Never. Right. So if I ask a question, it's a genuine question. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when you're talking to an audience and you and you think you know what they're gonna say or what they're gonna understand or how they're gonna feel, mm -hmm. then you then you 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 kind of lost it because you're hallucinating. Right. I see. Yeah. You're, you're projecting yourself onto your whole audience, and of course, everybody's not like you you know there's there's lots of different styles and that's that's what i learned with you know doing lots of multicultural and cross-cultural stuff was you know how do you put that across in a way that translates mm -hmm. so that can even be you know the dialect of english that i use if i'm right. in different places you know the, mm -hmm. the dialect of, of english that i might use in india is different than taiwan you know because right, right. american and and and, uh, and british english for example right so so I'm always thinking about what are they understanding 
-hmm. and I'm always checking understanding and I'm always checking that could be non-verbally that could be if you're online that could be what kind of questions or engagement are you getting mm -hmm. um, that could be even even if you're thinking about something that's that's um, a subject that maybe you're not you haven't presented on before or you you haven't talked about before then what kind of questions what do, what do they want to know so i'm always about the audience right and then and it's importantly oh, yeah. about the connection as specifically to not only your material but to your audience as well like fostering that connection and and we've talked about this before i think where we we sort of discussed this this thing of um of to, to truly effectively communicate, we must understand the audience, as you quite rightly say, but we've also got to have the commitment and the passion for that, uh, for that material. Where do you think your, um, your vision for that, for that brand and for Competence du Cabaret and, and that passion comes from for, 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 this kind of, for this kind of work and for this kind of uh, level of engagement? Because it's a, it's a real thing of like, it's, this is something that you, you go into you know, full speed, you know what I mean? This is something that has a lot of, of, of weight to it and, and really important weight, like it's, it's quite a, a lofty thing in some ways. Um, so how, how did you sort of perfect your vision and how did you find that commitment and passion? So I think, I think that the, the key thing is that you're congruent between what you're saying, how you're saying it, and, and by how you're saying it, it's not just in your voice, it's also in you know, how you move and so on. And mm. most of our communication, the vast majority of our communication is non-conscious. We don't even know how we're communicating it. Right. And there's a, there's a, a, a quote, um, that is, you know, we leak the truth. And that is, that is a very, that's, that's actually a Freud thing, but I right. let's not go there, but, um, <laughs> but, but we leak the truth and that, and that is very true. Do you know, we, so if you are not genuinely, um, putting your message out there and you might not know everything about your message, you know, mm -hmm. but you'll know more than your audience. Right. Um, you, you also, your audience also doesn't know what you were going to say. So if you didn't say some things, they maybe had some notes prepared or whatever, and then you didn't say it, it doesn't matter. They don't know that. They mm. don't, they don't know what you were going to say, Do you know? So, so there's a, so there's a lot of ways that you can kind of get off, get off the hook with, you know, sure, um, sure. With how you present things, but what they, what they do know and this is true regardless of what your stage is, they know if there's conviction, they know if there's congruency between the character that you're playing, if it's an, on, on a stage, or, or if it's, you know, if you're a motivational speaker, or if you're online, then they know if you believe it, or if you're faking it. And right. maybe you can, maybe you can play with your voice, maybe you can choose a script, you know, we all see politicians who have wonderful speech writers and so mm -hmm. on, but it, there will be something, and it might just be little micro um, movements that 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 tell us that it's not genuine. Right. Yeah. So there's a difference between somebody who comes across as nervous. We accept that and we overlook that mm -hmm. if, they're, if they're, the rest of it is congruent. But we don't accept it if if we know that it's not real. Do you know? Oh, really? And you, You've probably seen politicians, and you might not know why it's not real or what's going mm. on, but you know that it's not, it's not congruent. There's yeah. something else going on. There's something they're not telling you, or there's something they don't really believe, or there's something that's not, that's not driving them in the right kind of way. And you can tell. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I find my passion is. I genuinely want to do what I do. Right. I genuinely want to talk about leadership or coaching or communications. I genuinely want a team to be able to come together and, 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 and communicate effectively so they can produce results. But if that's not there, if I'm, if I'm faking it, they'll know. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Commitment to authenticity and, and to knowing that kind of almost as like as a physical thing is very important. You know, we often talk about uh, between, uh, between ourselves and on this community about, you know, commitment to intention and understanding that. And if you, if you aren't in it and if you don't have that passion and commitment, then it, it does show. It just does. There's always, as you say, it's that there's that micro reflex or just that little bit of something. And you're like, they don't believe that. So, yeah. you know, what would be, how would you say, um, what would be the, uh, if you could give a tip to somebody about not only just, not necessarily discovering what their passion is, 
but tapping into that passion to be able to deliver something in a in that congruent way and and, and in that uh, in that articulate way that they they really want to be able to do it to sit you know to sell and to work and to and to and to live their passions how what what tip would you say would be a great thing to start with yeah so it's it, it, you know passion is the place to start you know you have right. you have to come from a from a place of truth and, mm -hmm. and genuine desire to in this case you know share your message um but I would say, you know, I always say start from we are strong. We, we, we talked about that so many times in the community. You know, we, we say that all the time, uh, but I, but it, but it's important, you yeah. know, like that's the, that's the bit is okay. So, so what do you know mm. and what can you put across with conviction? And, and where, where I come from in, in my own self is not just that passion for, for my subject, but my passion for, getting that message across to somebody else right and you have to want to do that do you know if if you don't want to do that it's a, it's a it's a bit like in you know in dance you know we always say finish the move because you can do a beautiful arm thing and then not finish the move you know but yeah. you can finish that move yeah you know? Point and them then, and then it, yeah but you've got to want mm. for that for 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 that that whole complete move you've got to you've got to really tap into that and so I, I don't just have a passion for, you know, leadership or, or communication. I also have a passion for wanting other people to engage with it. Right. So I have had to learn that not everybody wants to engage with everything. Certainly in my conferences, I have a lot of what I call prisoners who go, uh-huh, okay, show me. You know, it's a bit, I get, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to imagine this, what it would be like to be a comedian where they, you know, lots of comedians yeah. talk about this, you know, okay, make me laugh. Yeah, fully. Worst in the world. So, uh, so, I, so I, I, I always have some prisoners in an audience if I'm if I'm doing a speaking engagement. I always have some tourists who are like, okay, what do you got? Well, I'm interested. And then we've got some genuine learners. Right. And I don't just um, just work with them and ignore everybody else because I want to reach them all. Look, if you're going to yeah. be in the room or you're going to share your time, mm -hmm. it's valuable. Yeah. So you better get value from it. And I genuinely, if I can get them in the room, mm -hmm. I take the time to make sure that I build trust and we build trust at different, different rates. So I trust yeah. everybody right away because optimism, <laughs> uh, but some people take longer. Some people take a little right. while and then, and then you can get them to kind of go, okay. Hmm, and just uncross the arms and then maybe start to listen and just connect with them. And when they find out that I'm genuine and not a crazy person jumping around the room, um, then, then, then they started, they, mm, yeah, I know it's a pattern. There's a pattern in my work life. It's a pattern. But then they start to kind of go, okay, actually there's some value. Maybe I will go along with you and I will try that exercise yeah. or I will. But that comes from a place of being truly wanting to be interested in them. So yeah. I do my homework in advance as right. much as I can. I, I do I do all the preparation so that I make it look really easy right. so that I can spend the time and the energy. I don't have to think about what am I going to say next and you know what's where are my slides and what's my technology and all of that. I try to just make sure that that's all taken care of in confidence through cabaret. I just leave all that with Ryan. <laughs> but I make sure it's taken care of. <laughs> and then and then yeah, and then and then I and then I can I can concentrate on reaching the audience. And when you reach the audience, this is probably going to be one of my, my final questions for you today, but I think this is a, a really interesting one. When you do reach your audience and you've and you've got that, um, what is the most rewarding aspect of it for you? Well, connection. Yeah. Just connection. Do you know, when people get it, when people, when people, because I said at the beginning, you know, how can you know what you've communicated until you know what I've understood? Yeah. And so once I've connected and they've allowed that information to go through their filters and they've allowed that to go inside and to consider, and they've been allowed to have to, to give feedback in some way, verbally mm -hmm. or non, then I know that we've connected. Right. And I know that they've understood. And I know that, that the information that I gave them is valid or useful because they were there. They're still there by that point. 
And so, and so that connection, I'm, I'm all about the connection. You know, my, my genuine motto is let's do it together. Do you know, I'm just all about, let's do it together. Yeah. Right. So connecting with people. And that is the reward is the, that, that, and people, people, a lot of times at the end go, I've, I've heard this kind of stuff before, but that made sense. Yeah. And then you know that they uh-huh. got something that they can use. Yeah. And that's the moment. Oh. I don't know what they're going to do with it. I don't know where they're going to go, but I know that they know. That is wonderful. I love that. So this is the thing. Again, it, it's, it's, as you say, it's connection, it's passion, it's truth, and it's commitment to that truth. And that's what pulls you through. That's what takes you through to those next steps. And that's, that's what brings you through into, into, into developing confidence. If that's what you want to do, it's that connection and commitment to it. It's, um, yeah, it's such a, it's such a rewarding process, not just for, for the person developing it but for the people who are helping along the journey as well it does take a village as you say oh, oh it's absolutely rewarding otherwise why would we do it exactly. you know, it, it just wouldn't make sense right so, absolutely so and the, and the rest of it just comes do you know yeah. the rest of it just comes so you know i usually get more work i, I never worked for a client that hasn't given me more work as a result or say, can yeah. you come and do this for my team? Or can you, can you come and speak at my conference? And so, yeah. so I've never, I've never been in that situation and that's, and so that's great. That's not my, that's not, that's not my goal. That's the result. Yeah. Yeah. I'm achieving my goal is to connect with people. Of course. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for speaking with us today, Heather. It was such a pleasure. It was fun. It, it was, was fun. fun. I had lots of yeah. fun. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a great pleasure. Oh, and if I'm correct, we have something very special starting very soon. Am I correct? Am I correct? Yes, we have. That's right. Do you want to, do you want to, you could, you could do it. You could, there we go. <laughs> yes, everybody, we are starting our seasonal survival series our seasonal survival special, excuse me, uh, very shortly. We're excited for you to be getting involved. We can't wait for you to be doing this. We, we are very excited. Um, so please make sure you stay tuned. For- <laughs> I just love that there are so many hats there ready. <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> it's the season. It's the thing. Thank you so much for joining us today, Heather. Oh my God, there's more hats. <laughs> okay, there are infinite amounts of hats. We'll play with hats. But we are so excited because we're gonna have fun. We are. It's gonna be awesome. And our whole intention is for us to feel good in the upcoming season. Yes. Um, however you celebrate, whatever you enjoy, we're just gonna play together yes. and enjoy it and exactly. love it. Absolutely. And we want to see gingerbread house pictures. Oh yes, Not the gingerbread house, house thing like has become exhausted. a whole thing. We want you all yeah. involved. We want pictures. We want everything. So please send us your pictures. Um, so thank you so much. Shall we say it together? Shall we say it together? Okay. Thank you, everybody. We are Confidence Through Cabaret. My name is Ryan. I'm Heather. And we're reminding you that it is your body, your, your world, world, your stage. Your stage. Thank you thank so much. You. Bye.